My wife and I have two biological teenage sons, one older and one younger than our foster daughter. We have been fostering kids for many years, but the goal has always been to reunify the kids with their parents, which has happened successfully each time until now. Two years ago, we took in our foster daughter, who is now in her mid-teens. She had been through a lot and was labeled as a troubled kid and not adoptable. I won't go into details, but the issue in this matter is that there are images of her going around amongst a certain community from before we took her in. We were informed by authorities about all of this beforehand. So it's not like this came as a surprise after we got to know her. I'm not gonna lie, it has not, not been easy. Our families have seen us struggle, but almost everyone has been super supportive. The first five and six months were the hardest. She didn't trust us and she was angry at the world, rightfully so. Then one random night, I got up in the middle of the night and unintentionally ended up scaring her. She had a full-blown panic attack. She was okay after a little while, but it was like something clicked for her that night. It was like she realized that we were on her side and we watched her change from this angry and sad little girl to the ambitious young teenager we know today. It started with her telling us thank you for everything we did, small things like driving her to practice, and she said it with a smile on her face. It was so amazing to see her feeling better and not so lonely anymore. From there, everything changed. She made new friends and got a lot closer to my sons, especially the older one. Her grades went from failing multiple classes to getting straight A's, not because we were nagging her, but because she wanted to. Each member of our household has developed a good and strong relationship with her. And the love we have for this girl cannot be put into words. We've reached that cosmic connection. She still struggles with a few things, which is totally fair after all she's been through. But she is working on it, and we are supporting her in every way we can. Overall, she's doing amazing. She's so strong, and I'm very proud of her. We made the decision to fight the system, to change their verdict, from not adoptable to available for conditional adoption because we want to commit to her for life. We want to adopt her. Last month, we got the call that they changed their verdict and we sent in our papers that were already ready. And things are looking very promising. The thing is, we haven't told her yet. She knows that she is now adoptable, but we haven't asked her if she wants us to officially adopt her yet. My wife and I have talked to our sons about it and they are fully on board. We talked to my parents, our brothers and sisters, and their spouses. All of them have a good relationship with our daughter, and every single one of them is so supportive of our decision and willing to fully welcome our daughter into our family. Then there are my wife's parents. My mother-in-law hasn't been awful, I guess, but maybe it's because I'm comparing what she said to what my father-in-law said. We told them about our plan and asked them for their opinion. My mother-in-law asked if we were sure as our daughter doesn't quite fit in. My wife and I didn't understand at all, since our daughter has a very similar personality to us and our sons. But it turns out she's concerned about the visual side of it, as our daughter is clearly not our biological child, and people will start asking questions. The thing is, my wife, myself, and our sons are very tall. Our daughter is not. She is tiny compared to us and has a similar eye color, but not the exact same. All five of us have the same skin tone and colored and textured hair. Not that I think this matters at all, but the stupidity of it is unreal. Apart from height, she could pass as our biological daughter. So I'm starting to think this is a lame excuse for something else. I told her that people would ask questions no matter what. Because even if our daughter was the spitting image of my wife, it's not like she suddenly gave birth to a teenager two years ago. And the answer to any question is very simple. She's adopted. Ta-da! It's not like it could ever become a secret now, so I don't get it. My mother-in-law didn't say much after that, but it was very clear she was not on board. My father-in-law hadn't said anything, but he didn't seem excited at all. I asked for his opinion, and he just stared at us for a minute. And then he said, don't do this to yourself and our family. It's safe to say I was confused, but I had no idea what to say. After a few more seconds, he went off. He started talking about their family name, and he didn't want that ruined by a little witch H-E and what would people think if they saw these images floating around on the internet. I was stunned. My wife couldn't find any words either and started crying before she just left. I didn't say a word while my father-in-law finished ranting, 
but 1,000 thoughts went through my head. Eventually, he stopped talking, and I still had trouble finding any words to say. I just told him, You are sick! And I left too. My wife is destroyed after hearing what her father thinks about our daughter. We have no idea how they know about these images, as we haven't told anyone about it. I'm 100% certain my wife didn't tell them, as their relationship is not that great. My wife is closer to my mother than her own, so that wouldn't make sense. We have tried to hide this from the kids since this happened, but my older son sensed something was very wrong and asked about it. I told him our conversation with in-laws about adopting our daughter didn't go very well and they weren't supportive. He wanted to know why. I told him I couldn't tell him, but that it was serious and promised to talk to him about it in a few years when he's an adult, and I assured him that our daughter didn't do anything wrong our plans haven't changed, and that it's my father-in-law who is being unreasonable. My son told me that our daughter told him a few months ago that she didn't think my in-laws liked her very much, especially my father-in-law. This happened two days ago, and we haven't spoken to them since. I'm not sure I even want to try TBH. For me, this is going no contact worthy. I want nothing to do with them. My wife is in pieces, and has mentioned that she doesn't want them in her life after this. This has tainted our adoption experience for sure. I'm afraid, though, that if we piss my father-in-law off even more, that he will start talking to our family about these images. I do realize that he will look like a pig in everyone's eyes, but I would like to spare our daughter from everyone knowing about what's out there. I usually talk to my mother about heavy stuff in life, but I cannot talk to her about this without feeling like I'm exposing my daughter by telling my mother more than I want to for my daughter's sake. Internet strangers. I have no idea what to do from here. How do I go about the situation with my father-in-law without creating more mess than necessary for my daughter? Edit to add, just to be very clear, there's no doubt in our minds that we still want to ask for our daughter's permission to adopt her. Our relationship with our daughter will not change no matter what my father-in-law does or does not do. I realized from the first couple of comments that it became unclear after the father-in-law incident. Sorry about that. Edit to add 4-H later. I'm glad to see I'm not the only one possibly hopefully reading too much into this. I think you have verified I'm not crazy. My wife and I had a brief talk after I posted and have decided to talk to her brothers and sister first about my father-in-law's comments. It will be a hard conversation, but it needs to happen. Before I could get to it, my wife told me she wants to report the situation with her father, knowing about the images of our daughter. Right now, we don't know what that looks like, but it has simply not been possible for him to gain this knowledge legally. There is a culprit for sure, but we will leave that to the authorities for now. Thank you for giving me a reality check. And thank you for your encouragement. We need it right now. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I think you need to move quickly now that this interaction has happened. Firstly, you need to speak with your daughter as soon as possible and let her know that you want to adopt her. Secondly, honestly, I would get ahead of the father-in-law and tell the rest of the family in a vague but clear way. I would tell them that your daughter was victimized as a child and that images were taken of it, which your father-in-law is blaming her for. Everyone will know exactly what you're talking about, but you won't have said exactly what happened. And when father-in-law then tries to tell them with his spin on it, he will look twice as bad. I know you want to respect your daughter's privacy, but the cat will be coming out of the bag now if it hasn't already. I think this is the best way to address it while still trying to protect her. I would cut father-in-law out of your life. His view on this is morally reprehensible. Like, I can't fathom it. It's so awful to blame a child for something so horrific. Honestly, I would cut someone out of my life for saying this about any child, let alone my own daughter. Mother-in-law can stay only if she acknowledges that father-in-law is horrible. If she's not 100% on this, she's out too. What a difficult situation. Comment two. I'm going to ask the dark question here. If you nor your wife told him and you don't know how he knows, is there any chance he found them himself? In which case, that's a whole other reason to go no contact. 
My question also stems from his attitude towards this. She is still a child, and he doesn't see her as a child and a victim, worthy of compassion, but rather an intimacy being and an intimacy worker. That's not normal. That's scary. You need to protect your daughter from further abuse. And at the very least, he may emotionally or verbally abuse her. So cutting him out is the only way forward, in my opinion. But I would potentially ask him the questions I have asked you and pointedly tell him that if he embarrasses your daughter by running his mouth, you will tell everyone you know that he found that information out by himself and that you have gone no contact because you dread to think what else is on his hard drive. That should keep him quiet. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking with us through this journey. So the week started off rough. My wife and I were still reeling from the bomb my father-in-law dropped. We were worried sick about our daughter finding out, and it was eating us up inside. But we had to keep it together for the kids, you know? Then, out of nowhere, my younger son got into a fight at school. He's usually such a calm kid, so it was a shock. Turns out, some jerk was making snide remarks about our family, saying stuff about how we're not a real family because his sister isn't our real daughter. My son couldn't stand it and punched the kid. We got called into the school, and it was a whole thing. We had to explain to the principal that we're a foster family, and sometimes people don't get that. It was tough, but it also showed us how much our kids stand up for each other. Meanwhile, my wife was quietly falling apart. She felt betrayed by her own dad, and I didn't know how to help her. We decided to take action and talk to her siblings about what their dad said. It was a hard conversation, but they were just as shocked as we were. They couldn't believe their dad would say such things. They promised to stand by us, no matter what. But then, my wife did something unexpected. She went to her parents' house to confront them. I was worried it would just make things worse, but she felt she had to do it. She came back with red eyes, but a determined look on her face. She told me her mom was actually on our side, but didn't know how to stand up to her husband. Her dad, though, he was unapologetic. He said he was thinking about the family's reputation. My wife told him that if he couldn't accept our daughter, then he couldn't be part of our family. It was a bold move, but it felt right. The next day, we sat our daughter down and told her about the adoption. We didn't mention the drama with her grandparents, just that we wanted her to be part of our family forever. She cried, we cried, and it was a beautiful moment. She said yes, of course. It felt like a weight lifted off our shoulders, but life has a way of throwing curveballs. The day after that, my older son came home looking troubled. He said he overheard some kids talking about the images of his sister. My heart sank. We thought we had kept it from the kids, but somehow it was out there. We had a family meeting, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. We had to explain to our daughter that some people knew about her past, and it might come up. She was so brave, said she knew it might happen, and that she was ready to face it with us by her side. We're still figuring out how to deal with all of this. My wife and I are looking into legal options to protect our daughter's privacy. It's a mess, but we're dealing with it together, as a family, and that's what matters. Thank you for reading. My husband kills my beloved plants with bleach and blames me. So I expose his lies in court and take everything. I have many houseplants and even some that were quite expensive and were gifts from my sister. Within the last six months, at least a third of my plants have died. I have had houseplants my whole life due to my late mother's own love of houseplants. And I know a lot about plants. The death of the plants didn't seem related to lack of light, inconsistent watering, lack of nutrients, or even root rot. They just died very suddenly. I tried to not let it upset me too much because plants die, and it was not any of the expensive ones until now. My sister gave me a five-leaf Monstera Albo rooted plant for my birthday two months ago. It was beautiful. This morning I was crying pretty hard about it as I unpotted it and took a look at the roots, and I was looking hard at this plant and roots to see if its death was pest-related. And that's when I noticed a smell. I sniffed my potting mix, and I smelled bleach. The only other adult person in my home with unlimited and unobserved access to my plants is my husband. 
I wasn't able to talk to him for several hours, but when I could speak to him, I very calmly, but very directly asked if he had done something to my plants. He denied it at first. I said I smelled bleach in the potting mix of the albo my sister had gotten me, and that the only person that could have put it there was him, and he caved. He said he was putting small amounts of bleach into the fertilizer water jugs I prepare. I started crying. I asked him, why? Why would you do this? You know I love these plants. Why would you destroy them? He didn't really answer, nor did he really apologize. The trust I had in him is absolutely gone. I think maybe counseling can help us, but he is the one that did this. But I'm the one that would have to set up the counseling. The angry part of me just wants to be done with the relationship. I know that might seem overboard, as we are married and share a child, but I feel now that I'm not safe around my husband. Edit. I thank everyone for giving advice. The townhome we live in is mine and my sister's, our inheritance from my mother. My husband has an office slash den slash gaming room that is his personal space, and there are no plants there. There are also no plants in the kitchen. I'm not a plant hoarder. Like he has a room for himself, I also have a sunroom, and that is where the concentration of plants live. He has no reason to go in there. It's not access to our backyard or anything. I saw some people saying maybe he's sick of bugs, but I do not have a fungus gnat problem. I did see one person ask, why did I not smell the bleach when I was watering? And I can only say my nose wasn't all up in there, may so anyway. I also usually use a natural systemic in my fertilizer water called SNS 209 that smells heavily of rosemary. But I ran out last month and haven't replaced it yet. After our convo yesterday, I needed space. I spent the night in my daughter's room on a trundle bed. I'm going to text my husband today. He usually communicates easier and opens up more via text rather than face to face. I'm going to ask for a reason and I'll see what he says. Edit two. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to update on a separate post. My husband won't be welcome in my home anymore, and I need to find a lawyer ASAP on Monday. I did text him, and he admitted again to putting bleach in my fertilizer water. He says it wasn't every jug I ever made, so that explains why it wasn't all my plants dying, but randomly over the past six months. His exact words were that I deserved to be knocked down a peg. After the text communication, I went home from work early, and I entered his office. I usually respect his space, absolutely. I don't even go in there to grab dirty dishes. I don't know what I was looking for, but the hundreds of comments saying he was working up to something worse or already was doing something else really worried me. I went in there and I found a drawer full of my daughter's dolls and dollhouse furniture and little toys. I bought her that dollhouse for her fourth birthday last year and she has loved it. She takes such good care of her toys, but something always ends up missing. And it's always my husband who notices. He lectures her about keeping track of her things and how he won't let her play with her dollhouse if she keeps losing things. He keeps going till she starts to sob. When I hear this going on, I always step in and ask him to go take a break. I assumed he was losing his cool. I've told him this is not how to deal with this with a kid, and he says he just wants her to grow up responsible. I now see it was some weird scheme or setup or something. He would steal the stuff and stash it away and point out it was gone to berate our daughter till she cried. My sister and her husband and her husband's dad came over this afternoon and they've changed the locks. I've texted him to tell him he isn't coming back and that he can come on Saturday morning to grab his essential things. But my brother-in-law and another man would be there to watch. Sorry if this is unclear or things seem missing. This Reddit post isn't super my priority. I will probably not be updating again. Thank you to everyone worried about my safety. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I don't know your partner. Hopefully you do, but proceed with great caution. You may want to give this a read. Comment two, this is just so odd. Like he had no explanation, no reason. He just intentionally went out of his way to hurt you. It seems like he has some serious issues. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So after I kicked him out, Things got even messier. I thought I'd seen the worst of it, but nope, I was wrong. My sister, bless her, she's been my rock through all this. 
She helped me get a lawyer and we started the process of getting everything sorted legally. But then, out of nowhere, my husband shows up at the house. He's not supposed to be there, right? But he's got this sob story about how he's changed, how he's seen the error of his ways. He's begging literally on his knees on the front porch, crying and making a scene. I didn't buy it for a second. But my sister, she's got this soft spot for family, even when they don't deserve it. She starts thinking maybe he deserves a second chance. I'm like, are you kidding me? After everything he's done? But she's insistent, saying maybe he's really sorry. Maybe we should hear him out. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Then, as if on cue, my daughter comes out and sees her dad all teary-eyed and broken down. She doesn't understand everything that's going on, but she knows her daddy's sad, and she starts crying too. It's a mess. My heart's breaking for her, but I'm also furious that he'd pull something like this. Use our daughter to get sympathy. I tell him to leave, that we'll talk through lawyers, but he's not having it. He starts making these tense accusations, saying I'm the one who's been sabotaging the plants, that I'm trying to frame him. He's yelling now, saying he's going to fight for full custody, that I'm unstable. My sister's husband has to come out and physically remove him from the property. It's a whole scene, neighbors peeking through their curtains. I'm mortified. After he's gone, I'm shaking and my sister's trying to calm me down. She's apologizing for even suggesting we listen to him. We're both just sitting there, trying to process what just happened. And then, as if things couldn't get any worse, I get a call from my lawyer. My husband's filed for divorce first, and he's spinning a tale of lies, painting me as this vindictive wife who's out to get him. He's even got some of our mutual friends to back up his story. I'm furious. I feel betrayed not just by him, but by these friends who I thought knew me, knew us. How could they take his side after everything? But my lawyer's good, and she's reassuring me that we'll get through this, that the truth will come out. The next few days are a blur of meetings with lawyers, gathering evidence, trying to keep things normal for my daughter. It's exhausting. I'm running on fumes, but I can't let up. Not when so much is at stake. Then the bombshell drops. My husband's lawyer reaches out to mine with a settlement offer. It's a joke, really. He wants the house, the majority of our savings, and joint custody with the option to challenge for full custody later on. I'm seeing red. There's no way I'm accepting this. My lawyer agrees, says we'll fight it. But then, something unexpected happens. One of our mutual friends, one of the ones who'd sided with my husband, comes forward. She's got a conscience, after all. She tells us that my husband had been planning this for months, that he'd been manipulating everyone around us, setting up this narrative of me being the bad guy. She's got texts, emails, proof. It's like the final piece of the puzzle. With this new evidence, my lawyer's able to dismantle my husband's case piece by piece. It's not pretty. There are tears, shouting matches in court. But in the end, the truth comes out. My husband's left with nothing but his lies and a handful of friends who now see him for who he really is. I get full custody of the house and most of the savings. It's not a victory, not really. There's no joy in it, just relief that it's over, that my daughter and I can start to rebuild. My sister's there, as always, helping me pick up the pieces. And as for my husband, well, he got what was coming to him. It's not my place to forgive him, and I don't know if I ever will. But I do know that I'm moving forward without him. Thanks for reading. My girlfriend lied about paying rent while secretly gambling and giving money to her family. So when she stole from me and got pregnant, I took full custody and made sure she only saw our kid on my terms. Long story short, my girlfriend and I have been living together for around 10 months. When she first moved in, she insisted on paying rent and I was reluctant to charge her if it didn't work out, but she forced it and paid a month. Then I found out she's struggling for money, unable to pay for things, is in a lot of debt and lives month to month. She agreed with me that she'd start when she clears the debt. Fast forward to Christmas, I find out she's been stealing my clothes to give to her family as gifts. Another post on here. She lied for two weeks blaming me until I showed her footage of her taking the things from the camera in the living room. 
to watch the dog when I'm out. I later then discover through letters and texts I've seen appear on her phone, she's been doing nothing to pay any of it off, so I confront her. She tells me and shows me messages that her mother and sisters constantly guilt trip her into giving them money and have for years. They'll message her on payday asking for it, and she feels bad saying no, despite none of them ever paying it back. Her mom alone owes her over pound 6,000. She has taken a ton of loans out for her family, and they leave her with the debt and don't pay it back. Luckily, her credit is now at the point where nobody will loan to her, but she still tries and does it for them. I also find out I went through her finances. Yes, I shouldn't have, but, but something wasn't adding up, and I was being lied to, that in the space of 20 minutes, she spent 300 pounds on gambling sites. All during this time, she isn't paying a penny towards rent, bills, anything. She'll occasionally buy food shopping or trips out to Starbucks. I tell her enough is enough and she needs to start paying her way. If she can give handouts to her family and gamble, she can pay for where she lives. And she's taken me for a ride when she should have been saving and clearing debts. I make roughly 5x what she does. But I've been fair in that the bills are split proportionally to income. She'll earn pound 1,400 per month and pays pound 600, which includes rent and her share of the bills. I take on the rest, which is substantially more, but I believe it's not fair to take more. On the first of this month, she tells me she can't pay rent. She says she's paid out too much on our trips to Starbucks, food shopping, and I'll get it when I get it. But she doesn't understand why I need it this month, when she's lived for free the past nine months anyway. I've asked her to explain where her money has exactly gone, but she tells me I'm controlling and it's none of my business. In fairness, she will pay when we go food shopping, but rarely in comparison to me. I've kicked her out as of yesterday and told her she needs to find somewhere to live. She is, however, pregnant and she's using that card as a way to guilt trip me and make out I've thrown out her and my child onto the streets. In my opinion, she is taking me for a ride and prioritizing her family that is using her over her own family she started. What's the solution here to getting her to see she's not treating me fairly? Update, I sat her down and gave her an ultimatum early last week. I explained to her that we are a family and became a family when she decided to have a baby with me. I told her if we're going to stay together, she's going to have to be a lot more open, contribute, and no more taking on debt she can't afford, which brings it to my door when she can't pay. I also told her I want to see her bank statements because I suspect she has a gambling problem and is in some serious debt. She agreed to all of this and committed to showing me the bank statements when I ask and says, going forward, she'll pay towards bills. I believe she's turned a corner and start getting along with her better, and she moves back in. As I was sat next to her phone last night, when she went to grab a drink, her phone lit up with a text message. It read, Loan accepted by X lender. Click here to accept. I immediately called her out and she starts crying, telling me she has no money left again for the month and she's had to resort to payday loans for some money. I tell her she should have come to me and tell her I explicitly said no more loans. She also tells me she won't be able to afford to pay towards bills again. She works full time and brings home around pound 1,000, 400 pound, 1,200 a month, dependent on hours. But a lot of the time she phones sick, so gets sick pay, which is a lot less. I asked to see her bank statements and she refuses telling me I'm being controlling by asking when she's told me and I don't need to see them. That's the last straw for me. I'm almost certain she's been giving it away at this point again or gambling. I give her a scenario. Your baby is starving and needs food and there's none in the house. What are you going to do? She replies, you'll have to pay. That's fine. I'll happily support my son, I tell her, because the mother is clearly a deadbeat. So I ask to see her Facebook Messenger to see if her family have been hitting her up for free money again. And conveniently, all of the family members that borrow from her have the chats cleared. She says she deletes them to be tidy, yet mine's still there. I told her this isn't going to work, and she tells me I'm a controlling freak, basically. And she agrees, and I've not heard from her since. Moral of the story is she's too damaged from her upbringing, I'm guessing. And some people you just can't change. She still messages me asking how I am, but I'm just ignoring her except from anything baby-related. 
I need to move on. I know a lot of people questioned whether she's pregnant, how stupid I was to get her pregnant. I agree. And if it's mine. I've been to every scan, so I know she's pregnant. As for if it's mine, I've never suspected cheating. But she's a serial liar, so I will be forcing a DNA test through the courts. I posted on a couple of different subs to make sure I wasn't getting biased opinions. The above story is 100% true. I wish it wasn't believe me. But my focus is now getting as far away as possible from her for my own sake. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I'd honestly speak to a lawyer about filing for custody of this child. Gather evidence of her inability to provide a stable home environment for this child and that she's unable to support it financially. Comment 2. I am curious to know why you have been trying to fix this train wreck. I mean, no offense, but I guess most people would have kicked her out at the first signs of her immaturity and lack of responsibilities. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So, after I kicked her out, things went from bad to worse. She came back a few days later, sobbing, saying she had nowhere to go. I felt a pang of guilt, seeing her like that, pregnant with what might be my child. I let her in, but I was firm about the conditions. She had to show me her bank statement and cut off her leeching family. She agreed, but her eyes, they didn't match her words. The next day, she's on her phone laughing like nothing happened. I asked her about the bank statements, and she brushed me off, saying she'd get them to me. But I knew better. I checked her phone when she was in the shower. There it was, a message from her sister. Thanks for the cash, sis. You're a lifesaver. My blood boiled. She was still at it, giving away money we didn't have. I confronted her and she broke down, saying her family was her weakness. She couldn't say no to them. I told her it was them or me and our baby. She chose them. I couldn't believe it. I told her to pack her bags and leave. She did, but not before taking some of my cash from the drawer. I guess old habits die hard. I changed the locks and thought that was the end of it. But no, she started sending me messages, saying she was sorry that she'd change. I didn't buy it. Then, one day, she sends me a picture of a positive pregnancy test. She said it was mine, that we were going to have a baby. I was stunned. I didn't know what to think. I demanded a paternity test. She refused at first, but I said I wouldn't have anything to do with her or the baby until I knew for sure. She agreed reluctantly. The test came back, the baby was mine. I was going to be a father. I was torn. I wanted to be there for my child, but I couldn't trust her. I decided to take legal action. I wanted custody. The court proceedings were a mess. She played the victim, said I was controlling and hurtful, but I had proof of her lies, her gambling, her giving away money to her family. The judge saw right through her. In the end, I got full custody. She was given supervised visitation rights. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I could finally breathe. I could give my child the life they deserved without the chaos she brought. Now, I'm focusing on being the best dad I can be. It's not going to be easy, but I'm ready for it. I've learned my lesson. I won't let anyone take advantage of me again. My child is my priority now, and I'll do whatever it takes to protect them. Thanks for reading this mess of a situation. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.